Welcome to the podcast Mining Matters, where you can dig a little deeper into developing your English speaking skills as a mining or minerals processing industry professional with me, Kirsten. Each month I will dive into one topical issue affecting the mining and the mineral processing industries. You can listen to a short discussion of the topic by me, and then I will explore some of the background of the vocabulary and the grammar that I chose to use. You can then develop your own discussion of the topic and use these examples to deepen your understanding and bring you closer to English fluency. Now you can choose to record yourself at home and keep the recordings as a record to observe your own improvement. Or you could join my speaking program, get some personal and private feedback from me while joining in some lively and insightful conversations with other industry processing professionals. I promise you will see your skills transform in ways you never expected while having fun. Now check out my website in the link for more information about the speaking program and to see if it is right for you. If it is not, I am glad you could join me anyway and I hope you find the support and motivation you were looking for here. We work in a pretty dynamic industry and after the news of the controversial closure of FQM's Cobre Copper Mine in Panama, I have reshuffled my speaking program topics. This allows me to align with the dynamics as they happen. Now I was planning to discuss the lithium industry and I will just postpone doing that until February. And this month in January, I'm going to dive into a current hot topic. Now, let's start with a look at the operations in Panama. So the FQM, Cobre Copper Mine, is located in the Donoso district of Colón province in Panama. It's about 120 kilometers west of Panama City. The mine is currently owned and operated by First Quantum Minerals Limited, FQM, and they're a Canadian mining and metals company. The copper deposits at Cobre were first discovered back in 1976 by a subsidiary of Texas Gulf Inc. Initial feasibility studies and exploration occurred over the following decades. And by the mid 2000s, another Canadian company called Inmet Mining gained control of the mining concession for the deposits. And they entered an intensive engineering, planning, and permitting phase for the potential development of a large mine. Now, construction of the 6.3 billion USD mine project started in 2010, and that was under the ownership of Inmet Mining. And the mine would take almost a decade to complete. It was a massive project. But three years later, in 2013, FQM purchased Inmet Mining and took over the huge Cobre Panama project. They accelerated the project construction in the following years and commissioning of the facilities began in late 2018. The first copper concentrate left Cobre Panama port in June 2019 and commercial operations of the site were announced in September of that year. Now, it's one of the largest copper mines in the world. At full capacity, it's designed to process over 100 million tonnes of ore annually and produce more than 300,000 tonnes of copper per year. The estimated copper ore reserves exceed 3 billion tonnes. It is one of the largest undeveloped copper deposits worldwide and it represents over 40 million tonnes of contained copper that can be profitably extracted over several decades of mining. It has features like a 300 metre deep open pit, large scale processing plant, it's got a dump leach facility, a port and a power plant. Now the $6.3 billion investment is one of the largest foreign direct investments in Panama's history. The project attracted substantial overseas capital. As the largest operating mine in Panama, the government earned sizable tax and royalty payments. 
estimates indicated it could average around 600 million USD per year in government revenue. And the copper concentrate is exported around the world, mainly to Asian smelters and refiners. It generates huge export revenue for Panama. The mine itself created around 10,000 direct and indirect jobs during the peak construction phase. When in operations, it directly employs over 3,000 staff and contractors. It also spurs business activity and jobs in a variety of supporting industries. So overall, it represented a billion dollar boost for the economy of Panama. It was one of the key drivers of Panama's economy into the future. Now, like many mining operations throughout history, the copper mine was affected by a few notable incidents over the years. During the mining construction in 2013, there were some fatal crane and conveyor belt accidents that claimed the lives of several workers. So there were some considerable concerns over safety standards at that time. In early 2020, there were a series of anti-mining protests with local groups blocking key roads and bridges. They disrupted transport to and from the mine for almost two weeks before finally an agreement was reached with the government. In 2021, a fire broke out in the on-site power station. Now, while it was quickly contained and there were no casualties, it did result in lost generation capacity and impacted the operations for a period until the repairs were made. In 2022, the union initiated special labour contract renegotiations, and this led to a two week strike that only ended after significant wage increases were accepted by Cobre Panama management. Look, while there have clearly been a few major incidents over the last decade, Cobre Panama did show a capacity to effectively contain and respond to these operational disruptions when they occurred. Now, the original concession was granted to MPSA in February 1996. Now, I've used this word a bit, a concession. What is a mineral concession? A concession is a license, permit or other contract that gives private companies the rights to extract minerals. So it's an operating license. So the original concession was granted in 1996 and was affirmed by Panamanian Contract Law Number no. 9 in 1997. Now, this Contract Law Number no. 9 became questionable after a ruling of the Supreme Court of Panama in 2018, where they ruled that Law 9 is in conflict with the Constitution of Panama. And now this is where it starts to get a bit messy. The government of Panama quickly issued a statement that affirmed their support for Cobre Panama and that they considered the original mining concession as still valid, as the, it was ruled that Law 9 is not retroactive. That means taking effect in the past. So the contracts signed before 2018 were not affected. But during January 2022, the government of Panama made proposals for a new contract, including future payments and royalties. And such an agreement would have to be approved as legislation by the National Assembly. There were some disagreements around some of the contract specifics. There was a missed deadline by FQM that resulted in a short term, that is a two week shutdown. And finally, a refreshed concession contract was finally announced on March the 8th, 2023. The government's renewal of the contract with FQM triggered mass protests. The protests were held by environmental campaigners, students, indigenous groups and labour activists. Now some of the protests were held because of concerns for the environment and opposition to mining in general, but others were opposed to the concession granted to FQM, arguing that it favoured the Canadian miner and did not provide enough re revenue for Panama. And we'll just finish this podcast episode with the announcement on November 28, 2023, that the plenary session of the Supreme Court of Justice 
declared that Law 406 of October 20, 2023, which approved the recent mining con concession, was unconstitutional. And this was a unanimous ruling. And the controversial mine is set to be closed. In the next podcast episode, we will look a lot more closely at the current state of play around this closure today. I hope you stay with me.